happy. I'm very happy that you are joining us and talking with us today. Um, as the audience might know, Ernst Berlin is a very famous and special restaurant in Berlin. And uh, today we want to focus a bit on uh, how the change, how in 2020 now in this crazy year, um, how they developed and with their transformation process. So maybe we can jump right in and you tell us what your year was about and okay and uh, Dylan and Spencer you can start maybe. Um, so yeah the I'm Spencer this is Dylan. Um, <laughs> basically the crisis like for everybody for us was um, we sort of watched it coming as it made its way north uh, into Germany. Um, but it nevertheless caught us quite off guard. Um, so when we were forced to close, in order I'm to... I'm sorry, can I ask a question? I thought that um, you were planning to close anyhow to do some construction work. Or is that... Sorry, I lost you there. Okay, sorry. Um, sorry for interrupting, but I, th I thought um, that you were planning to close for uh, for weeks for doing some construction work. Is that yes, we were, um, but uh, came the lockdown came about six weeks too early. <laughs> so <laughs> for us, that runs on like even tighter margins than a lot of uh, a lot of restaurants, which already run on tight margins. It was um, still a bit painful. Um, so we didn't want to lay anybody off or put anybody on Kurzarbeit Geld or anything like that. So we were trying to figure out ways to um, efficiently and effectively spend our time and make a little bit of money um, and also support the producers that we work with who all of a sudden had no orders. So we started selling boxes of raw produce, basically. Um, we didn't want to do takeout or um, kind of meal kits because what we do doesn't really translate well to something like that. So we uh, instead just sold the produce that our guests have come to be familiar with and um, yeah, essentially became a glorified grocery service, which was painful for our souls. So yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like it's a bit selfish and I think a lot of people really enjoyed it, but uh, I really like to cook like I mean we both do and like I it brings me more joy to cook those produce as opposed to sell them it's just kind of like for me uh, it's like it beats like selling like your children because okay. you know you know we know everybody pretty pretty well and uh, you know uh, right now we're at our we're in Austria visiting one of ours uh, Farmers and I was selling his meat, and this was like a little bit strange for me because I had only ever like cooked his meat. So that uh, we did that for I don't know three weeks. Yeah, uh, and then and then we decided to just totally like uh, it seemed like we would never have like this kind of time, like three months where you can't do anything, you can't go anywhere. So we decided that we should. Um, uh, our dairy farmer had always like joked around about us if we could build a garden and he joked about it and we actually took him up on that offer and we started gardening which is totally different and something we never wanted to do but uh, it was more just like about learning more about kind of what our amazing farmers already do and it actually made me appreciate it so much more because it's so difficult and there's so much knowledge that's required and we had um, yeah so we spent we spent the summer uh, the or late part of the spring in the summer uh, in Sivalda gardening and then we ended up cooking there a bit and and, and during that time uh, a lot of things kind of changed we had already planned to change the restaurant so we, we um, before we had 13 seats and we wanted to actually make it smaller so we wanted to go down to eight seats um, because we felt like we can offer like for us and our cooking to develop further like we needed to cook for less people mm -hmm. that we're still 
now we're in the position where we also could potentially do two seatings. So it's this kind of the same number of guests because if we get too much smaller, the amounts we take are, are, are very small and I feel like we can't make as much of an economic contribution to the people we work with. So we thought, okay, well, we could do this two seatings um, and offer kind of this experience to people because uh, it's a lot, it's going to be a lot more intimate and a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more to, to, to the core of what we do. I want, I want things, we, we decided that we wanted things to feel more like uh, a conversation and less like an ex explaining and kind of preaching. And that's not kind of what we're actually about. So that was the idea. Yeah, going from three to eight seats is, doesn't sound like a huge difference, but for us, it's like an ocean of difference in terms of like how focused we can be on each individual plate and to each guest and attentiveness and stuff like that. Yeah, I can imagine eight seats. It's um, you can really, really have a focus. Maybe for the for the audience again, um, because I don't know if everybody had a dinner at your uh, great restaurant. Maybe you could ex just qu quickly sum up which kind of cuisine or which dishes or somehow which what's the focus on your place. I know it's maybe a little bit hard, but maybe in two words or something. Uh, that's, that's not possible. That's impossible. <laughs> oh, okay, then you can take your time and speak like 15 the sentences. Honest, yeah, the philosophy of the restaurant is that we never wanted to have like an elevator pitch. You know, we never wanted to have like two words to describe how we cook. Um, a big part of it is like I spent time training in Japan as a, as a young guy and, and I learned like fundamental Japanese cooking. Like I wouldn't say that I'm a Japanese chef at all. It's, you know, I think it's disrespectful to Japanese cuisine because it takes tens of years to learn about like the intricacies of, of Kaiseki, the style of Japanese cuisine that I was in. Um, but I learned like from a foundation, a foundational perspective about like the sensibilities and what they look for and all this stuff. So we, um, so we take that kind of philosophy and we apply it to uh, produce from from Europe, uh, mostly from around Berlin. So we work with gardeners that are quite close by, and then for other things like that are not as necessarily sensitive to time. Um, we, we work with, you know, Christoph in Austria. We work with uh, a citrus farmer on Sicily. We work with a citrus farmer in Toulouse. We get um, fish from a fisherman in, uh, directly from a fisherman in Nomoutier in France. But that was just like the natural progression. So we started cooking with just ingredients from the region and then we kind of slowly grew outwards when it made sense and we know everybody and we have quite good connection with everybody we try we don't work with any like suppliers if that makes sense so we don't work with postmarked or uh, like a hand like one of these like you know middle man we can't we can't like call people and be like yeah we really want this thing like it's kind of like what they have and we and then we cook that way so the menu changes every day uh, based on the farmers that deliver that day, we try to use vegetables that were picked in the morning. Um, we use different kind of like, we really have a big focus on, on stressless slaughtering of animals and like animals that live a good life. And so we serve uh, fish and meat, definitely, but definitely there's more, the most focus is on vegetables. Uh, we serve like a, a really big menu. I don't know if we're gonna do that in the future, like. A lot of things are changing for us as I think the restaurant develops as we a little bit more confident in our and what it what we really want to represent um, but you know previously we would serve like 40 dishes and maybe each dish was like one or two bites and that's the whole problem with the concept is like we can't take a photo we can't explain one dish because it's one of maybe 40 dishes that you're gonna have in sequence and so that kind of tells a story of where we are right now in the season or in our creative process or, you know, it's this combination of different things. So great. Do you think your um, relationship with your producers is not maybe changed, but maybe developing also because now you can, I don't know if you can be your safe supplier now with kind with some of your vegetables with your farm now? So realistically, we talked about 
we try to grow we try to grow nothing which any of our other farmers have so really the idea of it is to grow things that we want which may be like this special japanese vegetable or something that like we would not normally get from one of our farmers so that we don't have that issue we don't have that like okay we now cut out this farmer because we do this and to be perfectly honest with you like when it comes to most of the stuff that they grow they grow it a lot better like <laughs> I can't, like i think i can't stress enough the idea of like how important soil is and how, how important time is because like we work with some farmers who have been gardening on the same land and taking care of the same soil for 40 years and you can and they've been working biodynamic for 40 years it's not just five years or 10 years it's like they put in this time and effort and you really feel it in the soil and, and the quality and so like we can't replace that like that's impossible so i think we're really honest about the quality of the stuff we, we grow yeah i mean the, the the only thing that we that that really benefited us in terms of the cooking of our own vegetables was when we cook them in the middle of the garden take them out of the ground wash them and start cooking them directly um and that's something that we'll like never have again unless we do it in the garden again which we probably won't um so in that sense exactly what dylan said like it was more of a, uh, something for us to learn to provide ourselves with something that we wouldn't otherwise have but otherwise it would be stupid for us to think that we can do a better job than we can yeah, yeah. but also for you a super nice experience um, being outside all the time when you're mostly inside cooking and now in the corona in the covid yeah. time spending so much time outside in the nature i'm i'm the most tan that i've ever been in my whole life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've, i've spent more time it's funny because i spent more time at home and also more time outside than i've ever in my entire life pretty much <laughs> so it's this really crazy juxtaposition uh, like i'm i'm at home at seven o'clock cooking uh dinner with my girlfriend and this is not something I would do this maybe once a week like typically and now I you know we do it almost every day and it's like this bizarre world but I think in a way it's 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 like it's like any situation it's like you know make make lemonade out of lemons you know because it's 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 either a terrible thing or it's a very very constructive thing and I think we tried to take like a constructive path especially like for your for our souls like well uh, while everybody was locked down we were like gardening and digging and dirt getting dirty and learning and it was a lot of work but it was really um probably good for our psychology in the grand scheme of things yeah i mean there's a huge amount of satisfaction that you can get from like growing something yourself super sure. it's super crazy like putting a seed in dirt and then like watering it and like something comes out it's like it's a it's it's pretty amazing and so when you have like we had a lot of failure but like when you have success it's pretty awesome <laughs> is it something you think of um implementing in your work schedule or in your day when you're opening the restaurant again going to the farm some of your employees or or you yourself Yeah, we talked about it. In an ideal world that would be that would be good. We're trying to figure out how we can do that logistically because the farm's like an hour and a half outside of the city and it's to do it to do it right, it's like a full-time job, even a small garden like ours. Um so we're going to try and at the very least, you know, from now on grow some sort of less demanding uh stuff that that kind of does its own thing and because you know some things require constant attention and some things are a little bit more resilient to to the nature yeah i mean like we've set some like goals to say okay we're going to grow certain things for like our new project and stuff like that so that we like yeah i mean and we'll have some time to kind of reassess because this season's going to be one you know as we're opening and so then we can figure it out by the time we need to start doing things in early next year. Be, besides from the um from the eight seeds now, do you did you like transform something else in in ants or do you have like now 
completely new ideas or say, oh, are you saying to do this anymore like we did before? Yeah, it's really different. Like, almost <laughs> different. Um, no, I mean, we were like, we were like, at some point, we were like, hey, we want to change this, we want to change this. Uh, and at some point, it just became like, okay, we should really rethink a lot of aspects of what we're doing because uh, it's kind of weird if you change one thing. Like, it's weird if you like make the counter shorter, but it's the same counter and all this stuff. It, we ran into all these like problems as we were thinking about it. And that would, that would just kind of be disorienting for people who have been to the restaurant before. So we decided to change it. Um, and like, for instance, like where we're cooking has changed. So before we were cooking kind of on the island, like this island in the center, um, which, you know, it, it seems really close, but uh, I feel like sometimes, especially because Spencer and I are doing a lot of cooking, like a lot of chefs are managing and running the pass and stuff. Uh, we're like cooking stuff. So like all service, we're very busy. And I think the, the problem with that is that we lose connect with the guests sometimes, and then again, we kind of have to reconnect. Um, and certain details I think are missed and certain things feel forced. Um, so we want to kind of like bridge that gap and make it more like a, like a very, um, more of an entire experience that's just like coming into kind of our place and we, we cook for you, but also, you know, you understand that the, we work in this really like cyclical nature. So we serve uh, like the same thing several times in the menu, but in a different way or a different part of the same thing. And I feel like sometimes we needed to tell like this very big story surrounding it. Um, and I feel like if people actually can see what's happening, with a little bit more detail, like it doesn't get lost and kind of like Ernst was this like lively, very chaotic, chaotic in a weird way place. And now for us, we want it to be like a little bit more calm, a little bit more like to the point, removing kind of unnecessary details, being more refined and focused to so like the points that are very important, but like shine more. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at. But yeah, we should. It's coming together. I mean, I think we open in a month. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. And I heard that you are thinking of um, opening another restaurant bar, something in between. Was it? Is that something you cannot talk about in the in the internet? Oh, uh, we can. We can talk. About it. <laughs> it is happening. It is happening. Something is happening. Yeah, um, we were just like, we got offered, um, we got offered a space uh, across the street, like 20 meters away. Um, and for us, part of, part of us developing as a restaurant has a lot to do with being able to like, we've always wanted to, you know, we work with whole animal butchery, but like, because we only had 12 seats, we couldn't take a whole pig, for instance. So we figured out ways to deal with this. Like, for instance, like, we make charcuterie from certain parts of it. We we do things, but we never had the capacity to be like, okay, well, this cut we don't use for urns, so we can use it for somewhere else. Or like these vegetables maybe are not necessarily what we want, but we can support the farmer and we can use it somewhere else. So we always wanted that. And um, and then, you know, the, the right people came around. So like um, my girlfriend is playing a big part of it, Inga, and she's like, spearheading it and so we're it's going to be like somewhere between a cafe and like a wine bar and we we had this we had this plan uh to build like a wine bar and it was going to be quite big and quite like this big project and then the moment we were about to like start going on it and really like sign all the papers and stuff corona happened yeah. so we, we stopped and we were just like hey this is the worst time in the world to like get an investment for a project. So we just like actually took about a month and we really like, it was stressful and all this stuff, but it was also really good because we, we refocused and we said, okay, what is important for us? And can we do something that is much more organic and simple? Because I mean, the origin of our restaurant is like, it started in my flat 
and it was this really organic process where like little by little we grew we you know found this ceramicist we found this person and we bought things kind of little by little as we cooked and then at some point the natural progression was just like to open a restaurant and the and we did that we opened that restaurant with also like a very small amount of money and we grew it little by little and so to like totally go to it in a completely different direction open this like project which is like well financed and like all this stuff it just felt a little foreign so we decided to go back kind of to that method so we're going to do something like really small we're going to do we're going to focus on like a lunch in the beginning because there's not that many great lunch options in Berlin so we wanted to do something like really easy um, but also very inspired and you know we have great people working on it so we're going to do a lunch of a great a good friend of ours is going to do coffee during the morning and he's doing like Japanese hand pour coffee like and he's roasting his own beans and it's going to be fantastic we'll do a little baking along with that and then we're going to do this lunch and then in the afternoon because also in Berlin there's nowhere to drink a nice glass of wine before six o'clock uh we're going to do like kind of uh like people can around so people be open until like late evening where people can come for like a drink and like on a saturday or a sunday where like where do you go so that's like for a good good glass of wine that's really really great what do you think because um what do you think like what was your success during the surviving such a pandemic as a restaurant do you think like you did things before right and that's why you didn't need to close down or how we were, we were really lucky i think we like before corona even happened in january me and spencer had this discussion and we had decided that we wanted to make this change and then along with that change we made some decisions like that were just like you know things kind of we were not put in a financial situation where we had to like pay a lot of staff for like the next year. Yeah, we had a couple of staff who had been with us basically since the beginning who were moving on at the end of April anyway. And so we it was, we were left with like uh, the lowest expenses we've ever had to deal with. Yeah, yeah. And so that was it was just quite it was quite a natural like it was quite a natural thing for us but also just really lucky and I think I mean, the thing is for me now, I think it's too early to say if we'll survive or not. I mean, I think the next six months are going to be quite difficult, mm. but I'm cautiously optimistic. I think we've really kind of taken this into account as we move forward and we're just going to be like really, we're really small. We're going to have just four people working, including ourselves, and just really try to just make the best of this and and get to a point where you know things return to some level of normalcy and we can continue like as we would normally but i'm very like yeah i'm very uh cautious i'm very cautious at the moment but yeah I think maybe you're also creating a nice environment with these eight seats people are, can, because I have the feeling like now everybody's sitting outside in restaurants and feeling some kind of free and not, I don't know, some people are super scared for, from human connection now, some people are easygoing. And I think now with uh, October coming up and everything and when people need to move inside, as guests in the restaurants, they're gonna. Be, some people are gonna be a, a bit scared, and maybe the the atmosphere you are creating is um, everybody can enjoy somehow. It sounds super weird, but yeah. I mean, I think that's one thing that's in our favor is that it is small. Like, I mean, if you go to a hundred C restaurant, like I think, and you're inside, I think people are gonna feel like a certain level of anxiety, um, which is understandable but like i think for us that kind of level of intimacy will be interesting um i don't know how it's going to be to cook with a mask on Gosh, but, nice to have to cook with a mask yeah yeah it's gonna be weird um but i think you know i think it will be fine 
Uh, it's just one of those things. It's just the situation. And I think we can, we're not gonna, we're just gonna make the best of it. Yeah, right, we're gonna start with just six guests as well. So it's gonna be super spacious. And tons of room for themselves. Yeah, I think maybe the people are also craving to s that kind of experience now. Like been having the focus on on them can, that they can see what you are doing. I think maybe people, and then the connection with nature and everything. I think people are some people are now more yeah back to the roots or more grounded maybe or more open for new ideas. Yeah, I mean, no, I think I think. I think that's that's definitely true and I think you know we've always wanted this but we've always wanted to create an experience which makes like like the whole experience because like the food is one part the service is one part you know the atmosphere is one part um but um and then there's like this x factor you know it's who you come with all this stuff we've we've always thought that um our goal is to make people forget about the outside world so we're like in some ghetto street in vetting and more, more often than not when people are very surprised when they arrive but then also when they leave again they're like oh we're here i mean this is great because i feel like we've created a disconnect between the outside world and i think this is more important than ever to give people like three hours of just something else where their mind is switched off where we make all the decisions for them in a way and they can just enjoy and be present and all this stuff because i think this is few and far between at the moment. Just forget about what's going on and have a great evening. And this is kind of like our, always been our goal, but I think this is more important than ever. Definitely. Our next session, maybe you have some insights too. Our next session is going to be how we can rethink gastronomy from a perspective um, as an employee or as a, the owner of a restaurant that young people are still keen on um, going into all this education process to become a chef or to work in a restaurant without it. What's what's your insight or what's your tip? What needs to change? I don't know, because you went to Japan when you were, I guess, 16 and everything. So you put a lot of dedication in it. You, somebody or maybe something has to, was like really a vision for you. And I don't know if... I mean, we're both we're both uh, uneducated when it comes to cooking. And I think that culinary education for some people is really good and for some people it's unnecessary. I think you need, like if for people who have like internal motivation, I think it's totally fine to go and spend three, two or three years working in a restaurant to learn if they have like that self-motivation. Um, But for me, I think the most important thing was like, I was around like a group of like older people, like very wise, very, very well, like very experienced, amazing chefs. And I was around those people all the time and it gave me this structure. And for us, that's kind of like what we've realized as well is that like in the beginning, we had a lot of very young, passionate people, but sometimes you need to have like this kind of structure of, a few older people who kind of can because people young like young people are young people have like their their highs are high and their lows are lows <laughs> and i think people get a little bit older and more mature that's a little bit more like it's not as sharp and i think having people like that on a team or being in a situation where you're surrounded by like that gives you like this grounding which is really important as like a young cook because if you don't have that You know, you can get into like a spiral of thought and not like, yeah, I mean, I will, I, I wash dishes for half a year only, like just 18 hours a day washing dishes. And so this was like, but, and I think not everybody is willing to do that, but like, because I was with that group of people and I saw like, if I did this work, um, I would be able to learn from these people and get their respect. Like this motivated me so much. So I think it just depends on your situation. <clears throat> thank you so much i think we have to close the session thank you so much for your insight this was a great great talk um happy happy slaughtering <laughs> now <laughs> from inside they, they have a pig outside waiting for them yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you.